today's uh, first chapter Friday is actually one that um, is going to be in Sora. So I'm continuing that uh, just for this particular book, but I do have other books in the library that also um, have these same characteristics. Um, so what I'm talking about are books that um, are written in both English and Spanish together. Um, they usually in the, the BBC library will have a red and yellow sticker on them, um, showing that they are in Spanish. Um, but if it is, and this particular book in our library um, is listed this way, it has the book written in English on one side. And then if you flip the book over, turn it upside down um, and flip it over and start start again, as if you're starting from the beginning, we'll have the book in Spanish, the other direction. Um, and there are several books like that. Some that um, have it like that flip flop, um, but others that also have like one page of Spanish and one page of English, the same page in Spanish and then the same page in English. Um, this particular one, if you see on the screen, has our, our title page and table of contents. And if you scroll down, we're gonna read chapter one um, in English, uh, cause I'm better at reading it in English, but then you can also scroll down and I'll give you the, the option to do this, to start with, of course, the table of contents, contents then to see um, the chapter in Spanish. And so you can see both. It would take me much longer to, to read it and pronounce it correctly in Spanish. Um, so I'm personally going to read it in, in English, but you may, if you check this book out or, or another similar one like it, you may of course start with the Spanish. So here we go with chapter one of Joe, or Rooster Joe and the Bully by Xavier Garza. Chapter one, you sure do draw roosters good, Joe. You sure do draw roosters good, Joe, says my best friend Gary as he leans over from his chair and looks at the drawing I just finished in art class. It's a sketch of a rooster perched atop a barbed wire fence. It's just a sketch, I tell Gary. Pretty awesome sketch if you ask me, dude, especially when you compare it to my drawing, he says, showing me his sketch featuring a mis misshapen stick figure riding atop an exaggeratedly long skateboard. It's not that bad, I tell him. You're just saying that because I'm your best friend, he tells me, smiling. We both know I stink at drawing big time. Maybe if you practice a little more. Not even if I carried a sketch pad with me everywhere, like you do, Joe, says Gary, making reference to the fact that I am always carrying a sketch pad tucked under my arm and a pencil in my back pocket. You just never know when a great idea will pop in your head and I want to be ready. I'm just not talented like you are, he adds, as he continues slipping through the rest of my drawings. Roosters, roosters, and more roosters. Why do you love to draw roosters so much, Joe? Good question. Why do I love roosters so much? I don't know. Maybe because the first thing I ever drew was a rooster. It was. It happened in the back of my grandpa Jesse's house. The one that is a famous artist? I nod. He raises roosters in his backyard. One day I just started drawing one of them. It was a beautiful red rooster with shiny feathers. Does he raise roosters for fighting, asked Gary? No way, I tell him. Grandpa Jesse hates the fact that some people make roosters fight. He says that a rooster is a proud animal and should be treated with respect, that it is among the bravest animals in the whole world. How can a rooster be brave? Asked Gary, looking somewhat confused. You know what? I asked Grandpa Jesse that very same question when he told me that. What did he tell you? He answered my question with another question. He asked if I had ever seen a rooster run away from a fight. Had you? Nope, I tell Gary. A rooster will never run away from a fight, even when the animal they are being threatened by is bigger than them. They will stand their ground and fight if necessary. Have you shown your drawings to Mrs. Davia? Asks Gary, handing my sketch pad back to me. I'm sorry, it's Mrs. Davila. Mrs. Davila is our brand new seventh grade art teacher. She got hired after Mr. Lopez retired last year. If you haven't, you should. I'm not ready, I tell him. Not ready for what? Asks Mrs. Davila, overhearing us from her desk. Joe makes the coolest drawings of roosters, says Gary. Mrs. Davila stands up and walks over to our table. Can I see your drawings, Joe? She asks me. I open up my sketch pad and show her. I still need to add more detail to some of them, I tell her nervously. I'm not used to showing my drawings to teachers. You draw very well, Joe, she tells me. Keep practicing and one day you might truly grow up to be, become a great artist. Maybe even better than your grandpa, Jesse. 
You've heard of my grandfather? Who hasn't, she says, smiling. Everybody in San Antonio knows who he is. It's true. Grandpa Jesse is a very famous artist. His paintings can be found on murals all around the city. Why, you can't go five blocks into downtown without running into some of his artwork. Back when I was very little, people told stories of how the reason my grandfather was such a good artist was because he had been born with a paintbrush in his hand. When I actually asked him if that story was true, he laughed so loud that he sounded like a rooster crowing. Mrs. Davila's comment meant, really meant a lot to me. Compliment, sorry, really meant a lot to me. No teacher has ever told me that I could grow up to become a great anything before, let alone compared me fav favorably to one of the greatest artists in San Antonio. Her words made me feel pretty darn proud of myself. These are some very beautiful pencil drawings, Joe, she tells me. Have you ever painted? You mean like with paint? No, I've never painted before in my life. If you want to try to, I can give you a canvas to work on, she tells me. If you do a good job, it might not be a bad idea for you to enter it into the county fair in a couple weeks. The county fair? Isn't that where they have contests for like cows and pigs? They also have an art show competition, Joe. If I remember correctly, that's where your grandfather won his first art contest back when he was junior high. He was in junior high. You have to do it, says Gary. You have to enter that contest, Joe. Maybe, I tell him. It would depend on how good my painting turns out. But what if I can't do it? What if my attempt at painting turns out to be a total disaster? Mrs. Davila leaves and comes back with a blank canvas and hands it to me. Why don't you sketch on it over the weekend, she tells me. I can start teaching you how to paint with oils next week. Did she just say, teach me to paint with oils, not tempera paint? Not that there's anything wrong with using tempera paint. I mean, it's okay, but it's the kind of paint used by little kids. It says so right on the bottle, perfect for little kids, but not oil paint. Oh no, to paint with oils is to use what the real artists use. It's what my grandfather uses. I can't wait to get started. Maybe your grandfather, Jesse, can help you over the weekend, she tells me. He is not just a great artist, you know. He's also a pretty good art teacher. I will ask him, I tell her, as I stare at the blank canvas in front of me. It's so full of possibilities, and I can't wait to get started. And that's the end of chapter one of Rooster Joe.